that because we are moving forward. If you will, before you're seated, I want to look at the book of 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 14. If we can move those monitors in for, for me just a little bit so I can hear a little bit better. 2 Kings chapter 3, I want to begin reading in verse 14. And Elisha said, thank you, as the Lord of hosts liveth before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would not look toward thee nor see thee. But now, behold, bring me a minstrel, a musician. And it came to pass that when the minstrel played, that the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, underline these words, Make this valley full of ditches. For thus saith the Lord, Ye shall not see wind, neither shall ye see rain. Yet that valley shall be filled with water, that ye may drink both you and your cattle and your beasts. Father, I ask that you anoint the words that we speak. Let them be words of spirit and life, and we give you the praise, and everybody says amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. I want to talk to you today about digging in the dark. A lot of times we don't realize how important our faith is. And faith isn't something that only works when life is going my way. Faith is most important in the hours of my darkness when I don't know how I'm going to find a way. Uh, in 2020, there are those of you that are here and those that are watching online that have found ways to use your faith that had it not been for the period of time that we're in, you have never discovered a new dimension of God's blessing in your life through faith that is activated. Uh, it's important for us to understand that faith is a verb. Faith is a verb. It requires action for faith to produce anything. Uh, you know, I've heard people say this when it comes to praying. Get in a prayer line. They want prayer, and they'll say something like the preacher will say, well, do you have faith? And they'll say, I have all the faith in the world. Well, that's the wrong direction to have your faith. You don't need your faith in, your, in the world. You don't need the faith in yourself. you got to put your faith in God knowing that he is the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. So our faith has to be in God. Asa, the Bible says, put his faith in physicians and he rested with his fathers. So I'm here to tell you that God wants your faith to be active and he wants it to be moving. And we know that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of not things not seen. If I can see it, then it's not faith. But when I can't see it, I went by Brother Darnell's new business, and when I walked in, I saw the results of faith that operated when things were not seen. And so we today as believers, when we listen and we watch and we hear what the world has to say, it has a way of diminishing the faith that needs to be in the bedrock of God's Word. James said, faith without works is dead. When I go to the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, and you begin to look at the heroes of faith, they were always an action connected to their faith. Uh, it begins with uh, uh, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. Enoch, he walks with God. Noah builds for God. Abraham journeys and offers for God. And so as you go through the Word of God, you have to understand that the faith that you have becomes the framework of your world, and it's going to take faith, number one, to please God. You're not going to please God because you have an opinion. You're not going to please God because you have a thought. You're going to please God because you have faith. And the Bible says that you can't even come to God without faith. So faith has to be given to God. Faith has to be activated in your life, and the word's very clear that God rewards and honors faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Your faith is activated by what you give yourself to. 
Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. There are two hearings in that verse of Scripture. One deals with the outer ear, and the other deals with the heart. And so what do we listen to? I don't know about you. I've got to where I turn off the news. I'll, I'll turn off the news. I'll turn it on to something else. I'll watch a comedy. I'll do something. I'll go watch I Love Lucy. I'll watch Gunsmoke. I will watch something before I hear all of the bad news that the world has to say. I'll turn it on to Christian television. I will do something. You have to understand that what you are feeding into your ear enters into your heart. So we got to make sure that what we hear is uplifting and glorifying to the Lord because that's where my faith, if Faith comes by hearing, then faith is diminished by hearing. And it's what I put in that will determine the outcome of my life. So never, 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 never lose faith. Hope, the Bible says, deferred makes the heart sick. So there are a lot of people in the day in which we're living, they've allowed their hope to be deferred. They've allowed something to take the place. COVID, bad news. Political unrest, bad news. Turning brother against brother, bad news. My Bible says that before the end comes, the gospel will be preached to all the world and the word of God, the gospel, is good news. So if you're sick, the good news is he's a healer. If you're broke, the good news is he's a blesser. If you're going through a trial, the good news like Job, you're going to come out of this thing, and when you come out, you're going to come out like pure gold. Give the Lord a hand clap if you love him. So, so my walk, my walk is a walk of faith. I'm walking with God. Things are good in 20. 19, things are good in 2018, 2020 comes, and what happens? But you know what? I still have a walk. And I don't allow what is happening around me to affect the presence of God that is within me, and the presence of God that is within me is greater than anything around me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and he delivered me. Out of all of my fears. So we have to understand that our life operates in a realm of faith in the good times and in the bad times. Now let's think about our story. Second Kings chapter 3, it begins with three kings that have come together. They've come together because the king of Moab had a good thing going. The king of Moab was holding all the other kingdoms for ransom's sake, if you didn't give tribute to Moab and you didn't do what the Moabites said, they would invade your territory. So you've got three kings that come together. Uh, you've got Jeroram. He's the king of Israel. His parents was Ahab and Jezebel. And so we know the track record that they were given to Baal worship. So you have Jehoram. And then you have King Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat is a godly man that knows that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above that, uh, above that which you ask or think. And then you've got the king of Edom, the king of Edom. So you've got the king of Edom, the king of Israel, and the king of Judah. They have all come together. And in this alliance, you've got one king that knows God, you've got two kings that doesn't know God, and they have a problem. The reason they came together was because the land of Moab had oppressed them, and so they come to Jehoshaphat, the king of Edom, and, the, and king of Israel, and they asked Jehoshaphat to join forces in a fight. So they're now in the middle of a battle, and as they're in the middle of a war, they have ran out of resources, they don't know what direction to go, and their enemy is invading and getting closer and closer. Out of the three kings, listen to me this morning, depleted resources, 
an enemy that is coming and is stronger and more powerful. They don't know what they're going to do, and now they're in a hard place. I wonder if there's anybody here, either online or those that are in person, that in 2020, you feel like one of these three kings. You've been in a battle. You don't have any resources, and you're trying to find somebody that can help you. But the problem in this text is that Jeroboam and that the king of Edom, they go to Jehoshaphat and ask for help, but the problem is Jehoshaphat didn't pray about it. Have you ever found yourself in a mess and it wasn't because of what you did, it was just because you hooked up with somebody that was not walking according to the purpose of the plan of God and now you're getting wet from their storm? You know what it feels like to be a ship owner and let a, let a Jonah in your boat and now you're about to lose everything. Out of the three kings, only one of them knew God and now this one king asked the question, is there a word from the Lord? 2020, COVID, pandemic, nation filled with chaos, pandemonium everywhere. Is there a word from the Lord? Is there a word from the Lord? What are we going to do with our faith in this period? Is there a word from the Lord? And so in this situation, they began to make some decisions. First of all, write this down. Number one, which way should we go? We, do we mask? Do we not mask? Do we quarantine? Do we not quarantine? Is all of this make-believe? Or is this really going on in our world? We've never been here before. We don't know what to do. Which way do we go? You ask good questions on a Sunday morning. Proverbs 13, verse 15 says, The way of the transgressor is hard. So first of all, don't hook up with somebody that is a transgressor against God's word because it's going to make your way hard. I'm better preaching better than you're amen in today. Proverbs chapter 14, the Bible says, there is a way that seems right to man, but the end is death. So you got to make sure that you're not hooking up in hard times and making connection, looking for something that will help you, but you're not doing it according to God's design. So we know this. They said, is there a way? Proverbs says the way of the transgressor is hard. Proverbs says there's a way that seems right to man, but the end is death. But Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. So the only way that we can go is according to God's word. Number two, the path that they chose took them into a wilderness and desert. Stay with me. So, they're on their journey, and they are choosing a path, and the path that they chose put them into a wilderness and in a desert. David said, the footsteps of a good man are ordered of the Lord, and he delights in his way. David also said that he is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And so now the second problem is that they have chosen a way, but the choice that they make takes them into a wilderness and into a desert, but don't stop there. The Bible says that for seven days they're going around in circles. Seven days, hot, hungry, mad, and they're going around in circles. Think you're about out of it? Another lap in a wilderness. Think you're going to see the light at the end of the tunnel? And what you look at is a train. 
and you wonder, God, am I ever going to come out of this? And so what we have to understand is, in their present situation, they didn't see any victory. They're going around in circles with no resources. They're depleted. It reminds me of the woman with an issue of blood, spit everything she had, and had grown worse. But she came to the knowledge that if I can just touch the hem of his garment, things will change in my life. Somebody needs today to know that if you'll quit going around in circles and understand that Christ is our way and that nothing else, all of the political opinions, all of the jargon that you hear trying to figure out if God's word is true, can I tell you this? It doesn't need to be dissected. It's true from Genesis to Revelation. Every word, dot, tittle, you can stand on it. It is a nail in a sure place. Uh, it is your help in the time of trouble and it is your way out of the chaos that you are facing right now and today give the Lord a hand if you love him uh, so now the three of them come together they've been walking around in circles and somebody says is there a word from God is, God, is there anything that God can say? And they get with Jehoshaphat, and Jehoshaphat asks the question, is there somebody that can hear from heaven? And they said, well, there is the prophet of God, and let's get a hold of him. Now, what's amazing to me, they made all of these choices first, and then they say, is there a word from God? Have you ever seen people that Jesus isn't their first response, he's their last resort? They used to sing a song that says, when you tried everything and everything fails, try Jesus. Well, we ought to try Jesus before everything fails. We got to get back to the Word of God. I, I want to ask you a question, those of you online and those of you here. Where is Jesus in the sequence of your seeking? Is he your first response or your last resort? So before the prophet of God responds, verse 15, he says, Bring me a musician. Get the worship team in here. And it came to pass when the worship team played that the hand of the Lord came upon them. I'm here to tell you, we want to get God moved. We got to begin to worship him in the middle of a bad situation. When you feel like you're going around in circles and nothing's working, when you don't have any resources and you got an enemy that is fast approaching you, you got to begin to give God some worship. My Bible says that he inhabits the praise of his people. When you come to church, do you time it to get there right when the preaching begins? Worship is not the opening act waiting on the main event. Worship brings you into God's presence. Preaching is for you. Worship is for him. And if we don't learn how to worship him, all the preaching in the world will not bring change and deliverance. I want you to know that as we worship him, it will change the atmosphere. All right. It's, it's, it's both the music and the message that connects the head and the heart to God's purpose. It's the music and the message that connects our head for God's purpose. And so they're waiting on God and God says this. Thus saith the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. God didn't say how many ditches. He didn't say how deep to dig the ditches. He didn't say how wide to dig the ditches. He just said, dig ditches. Now you got to notice where they're at. They're in a desert, number one. They're in a low place or a valley, number two. They're in the dark. A desert, a low place, and in the dark. 
is there anybody here besides me that in 2020 you felt like you were in a desert, a dry place, and in the dark? Maybe I'm the only one here, but I can tell you there's times had it not been for getting a word from God and I found it when I began to worship him that would change my situation. And here's what we have to understand today. God simply said, I want you to dig ditches. And once God gave the command, he stepped back and he waited on them to respond to what he requested. Can I tell you something? My Bible says that if I have faith the size of a grain of mustard seed, I can move a mountain. That's not much faith the size of a grain of mustard seed. But see, this time it wasn't a mustard seed that God would use. It was a shovel. You got to get you a shovel full of faith during the time of your testing. You got to get a shovel full of faith that simply says, I'm not going to stop. And you got to learn to dig ditches in your desert. You got to learn ditch, to dig ditches in the dark and you got to learn to dig ditches in your valley because it's in those places God will show up. How much of God do you want depends on how big your shovel is. If you want a little response, uh, just use something little and small. God says dig ditches and we show up with this. We want God to move for us, but we're doing as little as we can. Yeah, we're listening. We responded, but we didn't respond in faith. We just simply showed up and tried to be a part of the group. You have to understand that to operate in your desert, in, in, your, in your dark place, and in your, in your valley, you're going to have to put something in your hand. Uh, let's write a few things down. Number one, the desert is your dry place. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 10. I'll give you waters in the wilderness and rivers in the des desert to drink of my people, my chosen. Uh, this was declared by Isaiah. Uh, they're in a wilderness and they're in a desert. And Isaiah says, I'll give you waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to drink of my people, my chosen. Isaiah 41, verse 18. I will open rivers in, in high places and fountains in the midst of valleys and I will make wilderness a pool of water and the dry land, land shall spring forth. So that's number one. The desert's your dry place, but God says, I'll give you rivers in your desert. I'll cause uh, the blessing of God to fall. I will bring you pools of water in your wilderness, and you won't have a dry place. Number two, the valley is your low place. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup runs over. You want the blessing of God? In your valley, there's going to be an enemy. In your valley, there's going to be an enemy. I'm going to say it one more time, see if you guys got it. In your valley, there's going to be an enemy. The Bible says that he brings us through the valley. He doesn't leave us in the valley. If you go through the valley, you're going to have to sit at a table, and across from the table, you're going to have some adversaries. Hosea said it this way, I will give hence her her, her uh, vineyards uh, for thence and the valley of Achor for a door of hope. Hosea chapter 2 verse 15, uh, the valley of Achor will be a door of hope. A valley of Achor. Some of you are waiting up on the blessing and you're up here on high ground. You're up here. Brother, come here for a second. I want to use you. Come here. Brother Darnell, would you come here also? Now here's what we got. Uh, let's see. I need. I need one more. I mean, you guys come. You guys come up here. All right. Um, come on up here, brother Adrian. Why don't y'all come up here? Whether you got, can you stand up here? Can you go ahead and stand up there? It don't matter where you are at. It don't matter how big a shovel you got, how much faith you got. Every one of them starts at the same place. And when you got a little bit of faith, you're going to get a little movement. So there are some people. Have you ever noticed the city of Dallas? There'll be one guy digging a ditch and eight people standing around watching him. 
It sounds like a lot of Christians. You got one people doing the work, and everybody else is sitting there watching them, telling them how to dig the hole, how deep it ought to go, what it ought to look like. And while he's doing all the work, they're sitting around uh, spitting their tobacco in the hole that the man's digging. You got to understand, if you're going to get to where God wants you to be, it's not how high you get, it's how low you go that will determine whether or not God is going to show up and move in your life. So, Brother Darnell, where he's at, with what he's digging, he's going to stay about where he is. But then when my brother begins to dig hard and he keeps his faith focused, he gets a little bit lower. But I'm going to tell you because Adrian showed up with a big shovel which intends for him to go deep. He's on a whole different plane uh, than the other guys are. He's lower than they are. Now can I tell you something? In your low place, you can look up there and say, man, I sure wished I was where they're at. They're not in the heat. They're not in the elements. I'm dirty and I'm stuck in a hole. But can I tell you something? It's from that advantage place when you humble yourself before God, he will exalt you in due season. So what do you do when trouble comes, you keep digging. What do you do when you lie on? You keep digging. What do you do when you don't know what to do? You keep digging. Now, thank you, gentlemen. Here's the deal with Brother Adrian. The deeper he digs, there's a, there's a time that he's going to have to get in the hole that he dug. Now, somebody missed that. When God gets ready to bless you, what looks like a grave becomes your point of resurrection. So you're beneath the soil. You don't know how you're going to do it, but God said dig ditches. Now here's what's amazing about this. When you are in that place of digging the ditch, uh, number three, and then I'm going to get to where I'm going. You've got to dig in your dark place. The deeper he dug, the darker it got. You follow me? There's a difference between a groove and a grave. A lot of saints just want to be in the groove. But when you begin to really dig, it becomes a grave. Now he's at a place that is low and it gets real slow and you don't know how you're going to make it. But God says it's in the nighttime. The entrance of thy word brings light. It giveth light to the simple. Uh, your in anger may endure for the night, but joy is coming in the morning. So you, you got to keep digging. It was Paul and Silas at midnight began to worship God. Atmosphere changed. Deliverance came into a jail cell, and everyone got saved. So in your valley, you got to dig. In your desert, you got to dig. In your dark place, you got to dig. So what happens while you're digging? You ask good questions on a Sunday morning, and I want to tell you what they are. Okay, as you begin to dig, you're taking what you got. All you got is a shovel, but you're using that shovel. My Bible says, despise not the day of small things. You got to get a dream. You know, Moses, he had a staff, but God used it. That's all he had. David, a slingshot. Samson, a, a, Samson, a jawbone. A Rahab, a string. Mary, uh, all she had was an alabaster box. Aaron had a rod. Uh, Darkest had a needle. You got to begin to use what you got. It doesn't matter how small it is. I was reading some fascinating things about George Washington Carver, who from a peanut, from a peanut, invents over 300 things. And he saw that nut, said, I wonder what I could do with that. He made things from laxative to animal. Biotics. He, he made things from shoe polish. He, he, he created uh, uh, medical things. He created things that would help it better everybody's life. And it started with a peanut. What are you starting with today? What is it that you're going to use? What has God placed in your hand? Well, Pastor, I don't know what it is that I could do. Well, you know, one day there was a young man by the name of Michael Jordan and somebody put a basketball in his hand. A basketball in my hand is worth about $20, but in Michael Jordan's hands is worth $33 million. It's whose hand you put yourself in. It depends upon the person that you will entrust in your life. Who will you listen to? A little boy with two fishes. Uh, that was all he had, but when he put it in the hands of Jesus, it fed a multitude. God said dig. He didn't say to talk, talk about it. He didn't say to think about it. Have a committee meeting. He just said dig. Well, how long are we going to dig? How deep are we going to dig? I don't know. I just know God said dig. In 2020, the rest of this year, dig, dig. Dig, dig, put your trust in God and go as deep as you can. Now, now watch this. You got to go these verses with me. 
chapter 3, verse 16. And he said, Thus saith the Lord, Make the valley full of ditches. My brother with the little spade in his hand, all God said was to do is dig. And so he digged. The brother with the little larger shovel, he dug a little deeper. The one that buried himself in the ditch that he dug, all of them listened, all of them did it, all of them moved according to what they felt. But watch this. God says dig ditches. Verse 17. You're going to have to follow me, you're going to miss this. For thus saith the Lord, you will not see wind, neither will you see rain, yet that valley, underline the word that, that valley, which valley? The valley with the ditches. Shall be filled with water that you may drink you and your cattle and your beasts. Verse 20. And it came to pass in the morning at the time of the meat offering. The rain again didn't start until somebody began to worship. They got a word from God that said dig ditches. Now God's told them what he's going to do. That they're not going to see the wind. They're not going to see the rain. But they're to dig ditches. Oh, I love this. And it come to pass in the morning of the meat offering. Dig a ditch. Put your hand to the plow. Don't look back. Keep digging. God will answer their prayer. God will fulfill his promise. But watch what happens. The blessing of the rain is coming. You're not going to see it, but it's coming. Remember God said, I want you to march for seven days. As they begin to march, the Bible says that the rain, I'm about to shout because I know where I'm going. The rain came from Edom. Edom was a three-day journey from where they were digging ditches. Ooh, don't miss this. So here's what God does. God says, you're in a valley. You need God to move. You're in a desert. You don't have any resources. You're outnumbered by your enemy. And God says, I want you to dig ditches. So for four days, they have been walking. And now, as they begin on the, on the fourth day, one, two, three, seven days, the last three days of their walk, as they begin to dig the ditches, the minute they put their foot on the shovel and started breaking the ground, in Edom, it started raining. So it rained in Edom for three days, and the journey of the water, it went through the hills and the valleys, and it went through other ravines and low places, but it didn't stop there. It didn't go to somebody else's ditch. It didn't go to somebody else's pond. It went right to where it was supposed to go. And can I tell you something? I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. We are hot. We're tired. We're faced with an enemy, but we're going to keep on digging. And as long as we'll dig, God will fill it. The capacity of the blessing of God is not dependent upon you. It's dependent upon your faith to dig. And the deeper you dig, the more God will send rain. Give the Lord a hand clap if you love him. Don't lose your worship in a valley. Don't lose your worship in your dry place. Don't lose your worship in the dark place. And it came to pass in the morning at the meat offering that behold there came water by the way of Edom and the country was filled with water. The rain didn't come because of the king of Judah. The rain didn't come because of the king of Edom. It was the God of, it wasn't the rain because of the king of Israel. 
The rain came because somebody listened to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. They didn't get on Facebook and discuss it. They didn't talk about this theory and that theory. They put a shovel in their hand and they dug as deep as they could. And I declare pathway, our greatest days are ahead because we're going to keep digging. We're going to keep praying. We're going to keep believing. And God's going to keep moving. Somebody's in a valley of cancer. Dig, 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 dig. You're in a valley of poverty. Dig, dig, dig. Your kids are acting up. Dig. You don't know what you're going to do. Dig. COVID's all around you. Dig. And as you dig, God will fill up and overflow that which you make available to Him. Give the Lord a hand clap if you love Him today. Now, I want us to do something this morning. I'm going to ask you a question, both here in person and online. If you feel like you've been in one of these places, a dark place, a valley, or a desert. And you've wondered, God, where have you been during this season? Because it was frustration that caused these three armies to come together. It was frustration that made them cry out. And then God responds and said, it's not going to be easy. You don't have to dig. And the deeper you dig, the more I'll respond. If you're here today, whether you're online or in person, and you'll be honest, say, Pastor, I've been in that place. Would you raise your hand? Amen. I think we've all been there at a time or two. I want us to lay hands on our heart. And the easiest way to start digging, the Bible says, is to break up the fallow ground. In the Bible, there are two seasons of rain. There's former rain and there's a latter rain. The former rain is for the seed. It loosens the soil to accept the seed. You still got to break up the ground, but it makes it softer. And then there's the latter rain. The latter rain is for the soil. It puts the soil in a place. Or the former rain is for the soil. Latter rain is for the seed. It gets it to where that seed can break up. And I believe there's a harvest here today that's getting ready to come forth. But don't quit planting. Don't quit digging. Don't quit praying. Your best is yet to come. I'm going to lay my hands on my heart and I'm going to pray just like I'm asking you to pray. I want us to do this. I want us to repent. Thoughts, deeds, actions, sins of omission, commissions, let's repent. Let's get it out of our life. I want you to do the same, same thing, those of you that are watching. And then I want us to make up our mind that we're going to start digging as never before. And we're not going to be like the city where everybody's sitting around watching. We're going to dig. If they want to be a part, great. But God's not going to rain in their ditch. He's going to rain in my ditch. He'll reign in your ditch and in our ditch together. Let's pray. Father, I ask you today that you will, first of all, search my heart. 2020 has been a season of frustration for so many. And Lord God, I think the church can be included in those frustrations. But today, Lord, we repent. We repent of sins of omission and sins of commission. We repent of the things that have slowed us down, set us back. Uh, God, the anger over things that we are not in control of. We ask you to forgive us for those things. Now, Lord, let our faith be focused. Let us put our hand to the shovel, our hand to the plow, and don't let us look back. We thank you, Lord, for those that are here that are sick, that we're going to dig ditches for healing. And we're believing you, Lord, as we begin to dig that ditch. We get the Word of God, and that, that Word of God, we begin to apply it to our life. It, it's like digging that ditch. You're going to respond to your Word. You sent your Word, and you heal them. Whether they're in person or online. Whatever the need is, physical, spiritual, financial, we're going to respond by seeking first the kingdom. And when you're first, everything else will fall into place. You will only fill a ditch that is dug. Our capacity isn't dependent upon our neighbor. Our capacity is dependent upon what we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. God bless you.